Chapter 4, Part 5 The gatekeepers wasted no time concentrating the firepower on the SOC. Marvin's Chaos Dramon, or as it was known to some, the Tyrant, held them at bay. The other SOC leaders, meanwhile, cleaned up any stray gatekeepers that managed to sneak past the repeated blasts of Chaos Dramon's Hyper Infinity Cannon. For a miraculous handful of minutes, they established a parameter and gave Tartarus time to work. It was a welcome break from the chaos that preceded it, but it also laid bare the great coast of humanity clawing at the entrance of the deaths. Koske chose to focus his attention on the three prototype Digimon, who were busy cracking open the gateway. He remained hololized beside them, ready to bear his entire existence to the digital world. It was what his pride demanded, and also the least he could do in light of the sacrifices of the SOC members that their partner Digimon in advancing the cause. He watched the gate cracking progress bar crawl forward. 30%, 33%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, 100%, 30%, 33%. Doromon called out, announcing the progress of the gate cracking. Complex code flew across Koska's virtual monitor, sending various commands to the three prototype Digimon. He felt like a sorcerer manipulating his subjects through a digitalized talisman. The code on the screen certainly looked like an incantation or hex of some sort. Tens of thousands of lines of it streamed across the screen, breaking free of the virtual monitor's border and twisting in the air until they were sucked into the various interfaces on the prototype Digimon. Their legs began to glow as the code filtered in, revealing a pattern of light in the ground below that crept out over the gateway, carving a complex geometric pattern into the surface. The last time Koska attempted to crack open the gateway by himself, Doromon's ultimate form made it to 30% and stalled. They'd surpassed that figure now, and were closer than ever to setting foot in the untouched depths. The gatekeeper forces, tens of thousands of AI programs, had their sights set on him. Pieces of destroyed gatekeepers occasionally flew past him, but he didn't so much as flinch. Eiji studied Koska carefully, moved by his singular focus. Eiji opened a monitor of his own to check in on the progress. Not that he could understand everything the legendary Codecracker was doing. 66%, Doromon intoned. The gateway groaned as the geometric pattern ate into it. They were two-thirds of the way there. Lugamon flicked their nose ever so slightly into the air. What is it, Lugamon? It's coming, Lugamon said with a hint of fear. Lugamon must have gotten a whiff of whatever was emerging from the depths. It? No, you don't mean... Hey, Tartarus! Eiji called out. He couldn't glean any further into from his virtual monitor which was more or less in standby mode now that Lugamon was devoting most of their AI functions to the gate cracking. Stay calm, Lugamon, Doromon said softly. There's nothing we can do about that right now. Lugamon grunted in frustration. That said, I trust your nose. Marvin? Doromon called out, its voice far more robotic and mechanical now that most of its processing cycles were dedicated to cracking the gate. I hear. That's it. At one. Fall back. Marvin barked to the others. Tapping out, sir. That's it for me, too. The other SOC leaders chimed in, letting Tartarus know one by one that they'd hit their mindling limits. It fell to Chaos Drummond to hold the line. Marvin, team leader, let's all raise a glass on Grimm when this is over. One of the leaders said over chat as the last of the leadership made their exit. You get it? All right, look. Ugh. The chat went quiet. The scream sent Aegis' mind racing. Had they been attacked? No sooner had the thought crossed his mind than a Digimon dropped out of the sky. 
landing with a sickening thud against the gateway. A.G. frantically searched for the source of a flash of light he caught out of the corner of his eye. He saw just one Digimon approaching their position. It had taken severe damage. Its metallic arms and legs were covered in gashes that belched smoke into the air with each and every move. Mechanoimon? Eiji said in disbelief. The Digipolice's mechanized Digimon must have shot one of the SOC's Digimon out of the sky with a beam cannon housed in its torso. I... I thought the Digipolice retreated. A series of small explosions erupted throughout Mechanorimon's body. It lurched to one side and toppled over. It was in dire straits, either from scraps with the SOC, gatekeepers, or both. The hatch on its head opened and a Digimon descended, now spilled out, of the chair within, Numemon. The slug itself was plenty damaged. It flopped to the ground as if trying to escape the Mechanorimon that did the flying. Satsuki hololized herself beside it. Sorry about that, Satsuki said, hanging her head as she placed her hand on the immobilized Mechanorimon. You're the deputy squad leader of the Digipolice. What do you think you're doing? Marvin bellowed, furious that she'd managed to shoot one of his comrades out of the sky. She didn't even have any of her commandramon with her. What am I doing? Satsuki repeated, turning to fix the mighty Chaos Dramon with a fearsome glare. Marvin felt himself recoil at the force of her gaze. I'm getting my squad leader out of here, you filthy cold cracker! She barked. A mirable, but what were you hoping to accomplish with a single Numemon? Marvin shouted, trying to deter Satsuki from escalating the situation. Chaos Ramon had its hand full holding the gatekeepers at bay, but Numemon was within range of the massive demolition claw on its right arm. It would take a single snap to obliterate the slug for good. Wow, I didn't know you were gonna bring Chaos Ramon out. Who knew a Digimon could look so brutal and grotesque? Nice work, Sunsmith. Hey, Satsuki. Eiji said as he leapt into the fray. Eiji Nagasumi? Satsuki scowled even harder. Her life had been nothing but a series of setbacks ever since Eiji entered the picture. He was pestilence incarnate. She would have some exercise the little demon if she could. It's too dangerous to stay hololized. All it takes is one stray bullet and you're a goner. Don't you freaking start! I know exactly how dangerous it is, and I'm prepared to deal with the consequences. She'd suffer the same fate if she were in Numemon's core, and it happened to suffer catastrophic damage anyhow. It's about to get a lot worse. Something real bad's coming. Shut it, puppy trainer! She snapped, and produced something from her pocket. Is that a Digimon dog? The pouch from which she produced the device looked like some sort of ready-to-eat military ration. It had a crudely printed label on it that read Classified Metropolitan Police Department Unit 11 D003799 Metropolitan Police Department Classified? Marvin's sharp Erdramon assisted eyes got a good look at the label. Apologies, squad leader. I just sent the higher-ups my resignation, Satsuki said as she looked at the unconscious Ryudamon, inside whom Yulin was trapped. Uh, Satsuki? Eiji stammered. Once I unleash the state secret Digimon, it'll be no different from the criminals in the SOC. But it doesn't matter. The Digipolice cannot afford to lose you! Satsuki yelled as she turned on the precinct Digimon dock. The wind carried a horrific metallic scream. There was a new Digimon in play, 
which put AG at high alert. But nothing appeared. What have you done, Satsuki? Up there! Marvin's Erdogan shouted. Genocidal rain! A hail of bullets rained down from a Gatling gun high above. Chaos Roman! No way! Marvin yelped in disbelief. The fearsome Digimon slouched forward, unmoving. It would weather the torrent of bullets just fine, but the sheer force of the attack pinned it down. I'm counting uh, to save you, squad leader, Satsuki cried. She's after Ryudamon, Marvin said, pinning Kerstermon down was a convenient distraction. Eiji crouched down and covered his head as best as he could amid a fresh volley. His senses were overwhelmed between the roar of a Gatling gun, the vibrations as each heavy slug hit the ground, and the clouds of scorched dust they kicked up. He slowly, carefully, lifted his head. Chaos Ramon? Eiji shouted, looking up at the back of the massive Digimon that had stepped in between him and certain death. They were protecting Eiji, and more importantly, Kosuke. But their assailant was a Digimon Eiji hadn't seen before. Brigade Ramon. Mega. Android. Virus. The Digipolice just had a mega level Digimon sitting around? Eiji said, aghast. It looked like a robotic humanoid soldier, as best Eiji could tell, but it could also fly. It specialized in aerial attacks with its Gatling gun, but the jet engines attached to its back could easily propel it across land at high speeds if need be. Its primary weapon was its right arm, a long four-barrel Gatling gun. Its head looked like an airplane cockpit with a special coating, but complex circuitry filled the space where a seat would otherwise be. This Digimon wasn't meant to be piloted, like Mechanorimon, but rather operated as a tool. It typically took two to operate as well, a pilot and someone to interface with control. Yet there was Satsuki, fulfilling both duties with ease. Hey, hey, what is this Digimon? A Dramon? It's a classified Digimon from the Metropolitan Police Department that even Marvin didn't know about. Damn you, stupid! Red Digizoid! Is that a foul? Satsuki curses. Its defense power is an outlier, such as Digimon that can withstand being hit by 4,800 rounds of genocide rain per second. Surprisingly, both Satsuki and Marvin were able to use Mega by manipulating tools. Although the specs are clearly inferior to the Mind Link Mega, considering the limit operating time, the overall performance of using such tools is likely to be better in many cases. Who's at fault, Shrew? But I caught him, Marvin smiles. Kersermon's crusher was grabbing Dramon's right arm, the Gatling gun. I got caught. It was on purpose. Ah? Uh? Dramon raised his hand opposite to the one that was being grabbed towards Chaos Dramon. Brigade Ramon lifted its left hand and pointed the three organic missile launchers housed in its claws directly at Chaos Dramon. You figured a gun that long had to leave Brigade Ramon helpless in close quarters, didn't you? Well, Brigade Ramon is ready for anything, thanks to the department's top flight engineering. Stop it, both of you! AG yelled. It's here! The gatekeeper parts that littered the networked sea slowly disappeared from view, as if washed out by a receding tide, or an air bubble from below. It was nearly here. The one creature Digimon in the wall slum 
were loath to call by name, rising from the depths to protect its territory at all costs. Delete all. The top gatekeeper who attacked A.G. and Helgamon on the floating island and fell to the bottom of the turbulent whirlpool, along with Leon and Kazuchimon. Don't say anything. Just do it. Just eliminate. Those who challenge the deep layer of digital world. No communication is possible. Among Mega, who are highly honed beings, they are the closest to a god. A system administrator. When faced with the armed angels of this digital world, Cracker, there's only one thing to do, even if it is against the digital world. There was only one option for anyone, be they a code cracker or an officer of the Digipolice themselves. Confronted with this Digimon, run and pray you weren't rendered DMIA. This time, however, Omegamon would come face to face with a cater of the finest mind linkers ever known. A handful attempting to crack open the gateway and one fighting to rescue her dear friend and colleague at the edge of the digital world. No one in this crew would be scared of quite so easily. In fact, it only strengthened their resolve and made what they had to do all the more clear. They steeled themselves for what was to come. His right arm is an absolute zero cannon. There should be no warning. Omegama manifests at the wall gate and fires the Garuru cannon. The aim is the person who is performing the gate cracking, fraudulent data from the real world. Tartarus! Marvin discarded Chaostromon and used it as Red Digizoid's shield. The metal body that was hit by Garuru cannon is freezing. Even the Red Digizoid, boasting its hardness, cannot block the cold air itself. Hyper Infinity Cannon! Chaostromon let out one final, defiant roar as it readied its weapon. Omegamon preemptively jumped into the air, stabilized itself with the onboard altitude control once it was clear of Chaostromon's head and took aim at Koske and the other prototype Digimon. Exart Destroyer! Satsuki's Brigadramon launched all three of its guided organic missiles from its left arm, each one slamming into Omegamon from the side. The blasts were enough to knock the Royal Knight off course and force it to land atop the gateway to regroup, but nowhere near strong enough to pierce its armor, let alone defeat it. Genocidal rain! Brigade Roman followed the missile attack with a barrage from its Gatling gun. Satsuki didn't fully understand why she was assisting in the fight against Omegamon. She had no reason to help these criminal code crackers, but it was clear that the Royal Knight was after Tartarus and Ryudamon stood a decent chance of becoming collateral damage. She had to fight to keep Yulin safe. Ratatatatatatatatata! Clank! Vzzz. Brigade Ramon's Gatling gun stopped firing and slowly ground to a halt. It was overheated. Wisps of smoke rose from the ends of the barrels. Satsuki wouldn't be able to fire again until they were cool. Omegamon, meanwhile, emerged unscathed as the smoke cleared. It calmly lifted its left arm. Transcendent sword. 95%, 96%, 97%. Dormon's robotic voice announced. Omegamon readied its transcendent sword and charged. Chaosramon was frozen solid. Brigadramon had exhausted its ammunition. They weren't going to make it. The Royal Knight was going to kill Tartarus. Koske! Eiji cried out. All he could do was pray now. 
everyone could communicate with that Digimon at the speed of light. Yet, here they all were collectively holding their breath. It was then that Kosuke finally made a move. He revealed two Digimon dogs, one in each hand. They weren't Digimon linkers, but they were synced and at once to two more Digimon. I told you I was collecting classified Digimon, didn't I? Kosuke said, revealing two more mega level Digimon. By which you mean you have two or three, each on the same level as Machine Ramon or Chaos Ramon. Gateway 99% cracked, by the way. Doromon said as the two mega level Digimon emerged from their dogs, just in time to receive the slash from Omegamon's transcendent sword. Kosuke's miraculous timing gave the humans a new lease on life and hope that they might find their way out of this. Ghostly projections rose up from each of the three prototype Digimon. Doromons in the form of Dorugremon, Ryuramons in the form of Hishariumon, and Lugamons in the form of Solugamon. These projections settled back down around each Digimon, wrapping around them as massive amounts of code began to shoot out from their bodies. The gateway let out another massive groan. The massive, multi-layered geometric pattern the three prototype Digimon created. The tripartite key sank a bit further and locked into place. The back door was finally open. The mega-level Digimon Kosuke had unleashed were torn asunder by Omegamon's blade, now an inch from finding its way into Kosuke's windpipe. 100% gate cracking complete. Doromon announced as Kosuke, Eiji, and the three prototype Digimon all vanished from sight.